don't know if any of you have been watching The Last Dance, uh, with Michael Jordan and the um, and the Chicago Bulls in recent times. But there was a big um, in one of the last episodes. There was a big focus on Game Five in 1997 of the NBA Finals and the Utah Jazz. The, uh, the apparent flu game where he obviously came down it was actually food poisoning the night before this huge game in the NBA Finals and uh, he still has an unbelievable performance and, and the Bulls win so we've got our own flu game which is Brian Wheeler in 1998 he comes down with a flu before the All-Ireland Final against Kilkenny and it ends up giving a man of the match performance scored 1-6 I think Michael Verney but it's a huge sliding doors moment and we already did a sliding doors moment on Rhino Dwyer last week and in 2013 the red card against Cork but this was also a huge sliding doors moment because Brian Whelan went from starting wing back to quickly being moved up full forward and the ramifications were huge yeah it was massive now Brian Whelan didn't have a pizza the night before the match like Michael Jordan did I could I actually couldn't believe that it's just it's funny uh maybe it's just back then or maybe he just thought he, he could eat or do anything he wanted and smoke the cigars and do whatever he wanted but Brian Whelan won is really really interesting so the night before the All-Ireland final in 98 it obviously been a big saga to get there a three-game saga with Clare he was out at uh Burr Intermediates were playing Burr Intermediates or juniors were playing crinkle in a championship game and he was standing beside his brother Simon and he kind of started sneezing or whatever, whatever. It got, got progressively worse as the match going on and Simon's asking him, like, you all right or what's going on? And he said he had an awful head cold. And um, eventually, like, that, that, those things get worse as they do. So he woke up the next morning absolutely stuck to the bed, heavy-legged, everything. They tried all sorts, obviously, to get, you know, revitalise him or whatever. And he went out wing back the day of the All-Ireland final and was on Brian McAvoy, who was having a game and a half, one of his best games for Kenny. I think he had three points got. And while Brian, I think, saved the 21 from DJ and was getting on a bit of ball, Brian McAvoy was having a massive impact on the game. So, like, in fairness to Michael Bond, who hadn't been there that long, it was a big, big move, and I'm sure they hadn't really discussed it beforehand. But they switched Michael Dignam back, wing back, from wing forward, and they put Brian Whelan up full forward. And the rest is history. Just an unbelievable all-earned final display. He was only up in the forward line for what? 45 minutes and he ends up at 1-6 and the crucial goal at the end of the game. And Kilkenny might just, they must think like what would have been if Brian Whelan had, hadn't been switched, Brian McAvoy probably would have got another couple of scores and Offaly would have been missing that spark up front. Michael Dignan never would have came back and got that unbelievable point that he did at the end of the game and end up with his sole all-star at the end of the year. It's just amazing, uh, as we say, the sliding doors, it's amazing the cause and effect of different things. Hmm. What do you think, Finton? Because there's always a chance that if he didn't get that flu, that he would have given an exhibition wing back because didn't he get five Man of the Match uh, awards for different All-Ireland finals between club and county? Yeah, like, his legend as a player is obviously for his performances in defence largely. I mean, you know, you go back to the 94 controversy over the All-Stars and all that and getting hurt of the year. And, uh, like, he was the only current player at the time to get on the team in the Millennium and that was in a wing back position. But the kind of, the story about him and the kind of his greatness is kind of bolstered all the more by what he can do as a forward and kind of proving his versatility by what he does in that final. Um, but I suppose you, you just wonder, like, would the scoring slack have been picked up elsewhere? Uh, you know, in fairness, like, obviously a lot of very good forwards at that time, you know, would have been someone else able to kind of, I suppose, kind of improve on it. Like, if you think about their 95 final, they'd score 2 8, they score 2 16 here, so it's kind of a big, uh, big increase in their output. I mean, similarly, they got 111 in that year's much uh, Leinster final, but it's just more. Like the '98 championship, I don't know would it be like would it be remembered in the same way if Kenny had won the All Ireland? You know the fact that like why it's going to remember so much because everything that happened off the pitch and the way that Offaly are the kind of backdoor champions and everything that happened with the three games saga in the semi final. In a way, Wheelan as well being the kind of the hero coming off his sickbed, it's kind of the fitting end to this you know mad mad kind of summer. Mm. Um, and it, as well as that, I suppose it, it kind of rounds off that. I know off he got to the final again in 2000, but I think, you know, Fernie has said this, that that was kind of the last stand was it that year at the semi-final when they, when they beat Cork, but they get their second All-Ireland win that team in the 90s when maybe they get the fortune that year, maybe they get it as well in 94. Like, you could argue, where they, did they play better hurling in 95? The year they lost it, was that the year that they had more regrets? I mean, they were brilliant that year, weren't they, in the Leinster final? Um, but this kind of caps it off, the fact that they get that kind of second All-Ireland, it kind of, I suppose, confirms the, the legends, legendary status of kind of that team and of Wheeler and himself. The 95 final was on TV the other night and uh, like you said, Offaly had scored 2-8 and uh, 
and with like 10 minutes to go Joe Dooley was taken off and I don't think they scored again after that now I'm not saying it's the only reason and uh, you know there's a few reasons that they lost that game but that definitely stuck out to me we'll probably do that one another day another sliding doors moment but Michael what about the fact that if Kilkenny had to win that final if Whelan didn't go get flu didn't go full forward Kilkenny had to win that would Brian, would Brian Cody have been appointed a couple of months later or would Kevin Fenley have remained there you go. You could say Brian Whelan and the Offaly boys were the cause of one of the greatest managerial reigns and the 11 All-Irelands that followed. No, it's a fair fair point. Like uh, Kevin Fenley, obviously, was, was I remember watching interviews after he was fairly down in the, down the dumps after. And a couple of months later, Brian Cody comes in. Nobody could have predicted what was going to happen in, you know, the, the good thing, what, 22 years that followed and the 11 All-Irelands. But that's a no, yet another sliding door. Like the sliding doors in 98 are just outrageous. Wexford are up two points going into injury time. Johnny Dooley gets a goal in Crow Park and Leinster semi-final. In he pulls on a ball in amongst twenty-four bodies. The Wexford team that had won All Ireland in ninety-six, uh, won a Leinster in ninety-seven, are now gone. They're out. They're they're out of the championship. The Leinster final. Then off they get in. They're obviously beaten in the the Leinster final. Babs calls them a heat uh, sheep in a heat. Babs is gone. Michael Bond is in. You know what? The, what's the name? Bond. Michael Bond. Like this was absolute like paper it was paper magic back then new media must have absolutely loved what was going on then you have obviously jimmy cooney blown up early in the the second game in 98 off the awfully sit down protest uh playing six days later or seven days later in Semple stadium joe Dooley delivering one of the greatest performances ever and awfully winning the all ireland but that was the last stand for claire as well so claire were the best team in ireland in 98 there's no doubt about that they were the, they were the most consistent team in 98 they just couldn't find a bit more after kind of the demoralising effect of winning a game in their eyes and then not winning it. They didn't win another All Ireland in 2013. So there's so many different sli- uh, sliding door effects as a result in one year. I think it, like that's why it's such a fabled year in GA history. And as you say, I don't think people would have been talking about it or would you know remember it in such glorious circumstances if Kilkenny had won the All Ireland. It was because Offaly did and because it was against the grain. <laughs> 